One question I've always asked myself about black soldier fly farming is, how can you start from absolutely nothing? I mean, when you have no flies, no larvae, and no eggs. Typically, I see examples on how to run an established colony where they are already harvesting many kilos of larvae every day. But I always wondered, how did they get there? Well, that's exactly what I want to show you today. How I went from zero to a thousand larvae in about 25 days so that you can see the entire process for yourself. Starting over isn't giving up. It's when I make things better. It's when I fix my mistakes. It's when I make improvements. So I'm gonna start over. I'm gonna start my BSF colony from scratch. Raising black soldier flies isn't for everyone, but sometimes people give up at the first step, and that's a sad thing, because the first step can sometimes be the hardest one. But sometimes, you just need to start over. I feel like black soldier flies are like flying ninjas that are hidden in plain sight. They're the kind of insect that goes unnoticed unless you already know what they look like. But even still, most of the time they come and go without ever being seen, or they are mistaken for something else like a wasp. It's been said that they can detect rotting food waste from up to a mile away. And they will tuck their eggs into hidden crevices so you won't even know that they're there until they hatch and then all of a sudden, there will be thousands of them. The key I've found to collecting the eggs is like the key to trapping rodents. It's all about numbers and patience. The more traps you lay, the better your chances are. But if you stick with it for long enough, that day will come. And when you finally get them, <laughs> such a good feeling to see those tiny clusters of little yellow eggs. Starting over doesn't mean I'll get the process perfect this time. It just lets me fill in some of those learning gaps I left behind the last time. But the faster I go through the cycle of failure, the faster I can learn my lessons, and the quicker I can finally reach my goal of having a smooth larva production process. If I don't grow until failure, I'll probably fail to grow because failure is the catalyst for learning. This time around though, I know what moments in the process to stop and enjoy. I get really excited when I get to check and see if my baby larvae have survived. I first check to see if the eggs have hatched correctly and they should look like tiny yellow tumbleweeds that will roll away if I blow on them even gently. And then I put my ear up to hear the little snap crackle pop from their wiggling bodies like a bowl of freshly poured Rice Krispies in milk. I didn't get quite as many baby larvae as I had hoped for this time, but there's more than enough to build my colony, and that's a win. Everyone says larva grows so fast and can multiply exponentially, and they're right, but their full life cycle from egg to larva to fly and back to egg takes over a month. So yeah, patience. While there isn't a lot of work to do while the larvae are growing, I usually check on my larvae about once a day or at least every other day. If I ever see them moving at half or quarter speed, I know something is up. Sluggish larvae are definitely an indication that something isn't quite right. 
These larvae are very sensitive to light, which I take advantage of any way I can. In this case, the larvae try to escape the light and burrow right down through my sieve and into my collection bin. They jump straight into the pot of boiling water, so to speak. This may not look like much, but there are over a thousand larvae in this little group. If I repeat this a few times, my colony will be right back to where I want it. This is how I started my BSF colony from scratch. Starting over isn't quite the right phrase, is it? It's more like, I'm ready for round two. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you next time.